Hi everybody, Christina Stewart here with Christina Stewart Photography and welcome to another edition of Photo Tips Tuesday. I'm so glad you're here with me. I am finishing up a real estate shoot, so I'm photographing a home and that's what I'm going to talk about today. A couple details are going to be for my more advanced students who actually, using manual settings, have a light set up. Some of it's going to be, some of the tips I'm going to be giving in this are going to be applicable for, say, the amateur photographer or real estate agent who is photographing their own listings. And even with a cell phone, you'll be able to use this, whether you have camera equipment or not. I'm going to give tips for all of those levels. So stick with it. If it's a little too advanced, just wait another minute or two and I'll probably get to a less advanced <laughs> tip. <laughs> okay. So this house is almost 2,100 square feet, four bedrooms, three baths, and two master suites with this beautiful pool out here. And I don't think you can see it in this. There's a water fountain. You could probably might be able to hear it out back. And I, there's this big room, there's an entry level, entry room where I am. And then there's this middle room with where the kitchen and this little dining room is. And then back here is a big kind of great room that can either be used as a playroom for kids or a den or stick a pool table back there. Any of those things. It's, it's a nice kind of open layout, which is really popular right now. In order to get all of this lit nicely, Especially with all these windows, you can see the light coming in here, these beautiful windows, there's some light right in front of me, is I actually use my own lights. So I use these for my studio, portraits, headshots, all that stuff, events, my alien bees, which I love and have had forever. So I've got them set up in two different ways. This one is the rooms, the smaller bedrooms are smaller. And it was a little more challenging for me to get in there in a place with the big umbrella and this whole stand, right? So I would just point it like this. You can see inside, here's my light. I would point it up at the ceiling because they're nice white ceilings, they're pretty low, so that I can get this really nice, even bounce light all over the room. So those smaller bedrooms, that was the setup for the smaller bedrooms. Now for this huge space, I used this and an umbrella on the second light. So this is actually an umbrella softbox, which I love. It's just pops open. It's really easy. Here's another alien B. Got the light stand. And I would set these up in various corners of the rooms. I could actually put one of them on the floor in the kitchen. <laughs> and then I use this one in the corner of the, this living room area. And that allowed me to light up both of the rooms evenly and then I use radio triggers my old pocket wizards are fabulous I love them they're very reliable and they trigger both of the lights at the same time so that is really advantageous if you're a professional photographer I would absolutely and you want to like think about getting into some studio excuse me to getting into some real estate shoots and testing that out I would highly recommend that you bring your lights with you the other thing that this is the lights are helpful with in these types of shoots is you see that we've got these beautiful windows all this natural light this back room actually has a skylight in it so there's even more light coming in natural sunlight and there's no way that you can get the whole inside of the house to be nicely lit and the outside without adding light to the indoors, right? Because the sun is brighter, <laughs> right, than the inside. When, no matter how many lights you turn on in the house, it's not going to be bright enough to match what's, what's outside. So that's what these big lights do is I can actually meter for the light that's coming into the windows or the outside. So you get to see these beautiful green trees and the pool in the back and the, and the water fountain that's back there. It's really cool in this little pond. So you can see what the view is by using these big lights to light up the room that I'm in to match the outside. Right? Otherwise, you would get these blasted, I'll change, 
you get more of that effect where you can see, right? It's so overexposed back here. You can't really tell what's going on outside. Now, if I actually go back, because all I did was touch that area of the screen and it exposes for that. And I've got my little light on me to expose for me. So this is more of the effect that you'll be able to get when you're using these lights, because you're gonna meter for the outside, you're gonna be able to see the green backyard and the pool and whatever's back there. Now, if you don't want that to show, then overexpose that part and just meter for inside the house. So that's for the advanced students who are using manual settings and have the option of bringing lights. The second option is to actually Say you're a real estate agent and you're photographing your own listings, which is totally cool, and you get an SLR. So you invest in a, a base model, entry-level SLR, which is a single lens reflex, digital, of course, which means your lens actually detaches from the camera and you can replace this. I would recommend investing in two pieces of equipment for you real estate agents. Get a wide-angle lens, don't go fisheye because that's going to distort your house and the rooms and it's going to make it kind of like a fisheye lens where it's going to curve all the edges. But get as wide as you can without distortion, which is going to be about a 16 millimeter, 14 to 16 ish would be okay. The second piece of equipment is this external flash. You don't want to have that little pop up flash that comes on those little entry level cameras. The one in pop up meaning this where it goes boop. I don't even have one on this camera. My professional level camera doesn't do that. But you do want one like this. It doesn't have to be this heavy duty, but you want one that you can adjust the head, is what this is called, where you can go up and down and you can also turn it side to side. This is going to allow you to, again, bounce off the ceiling, which is what you wanna do, and that will better even out the light of the room and to match some of the outside light that's coming in. So you'll get a little better exposed photo when you're at least using this. So if you're a real estate agent or an entry-level photographer that you wanna start in real estate, those are the two pieces of equipment I highly, highly recommend getting. This for sure. <laughs> and if you can get the wide angle, great. You can deal with whatever you've got to start with because it's always better to start where you are than worry about, oh, I'll do it later because I don't have the equipment but you definitely need some sort of light source to better expose your house. You wanna make the house look as great as possible. So if you have a high-end house, so you're a real estate agent and you're shooting these high-end houses, I would highly recommend hiring somebody to come and shoot them and bring their lights and really make it look professional because it will increase your sales because you're gonna have more people coming to look at the listing online as well as in person because the pictures are going to make the house look fantastic. So either hire a professional or at least do your best to get as professional as you can and that's what I've suggested already. Now my other tips are watch the details. Be really, really conscious of what you're shooting, where you're standing, what's in your picture. Compose your photo and then look everywhere, every inch of that viewfinder. You wanna make sure that if you are using lights, that your cord isn't showing, that your light stand isn't showing in the picture and part of the room. You wanna make sure that the tea towels or the hand towels in the bathroom and the kitchen are straight and even. No clutter on the counters. You wanna really get rid of any of that extra stuff. If it's staged, oh my gosh, your job is gonna be done so much easier for you. <laughs> if not, that's okay too. So really pay attention to the details. Shoot from every angle possible, every corner that you can. Um, get low, get high, change your perspective. Be sure to get the house, the front and the back from all angles as well. And just really pay attention to those details. One of my pet peeves when I was looking at homes with my mom was there would be <laughs> pictures with the toilet seat up. So that's really gross. <laughs> Don't do that. Be sure to, that's one of those details to pay attention to. So really a bunch of stuff thrown at you right there for quick real estate shoots. If you have any questions, comment, direct message me. I'm happy to answer them. And I loved hanging out with you guys. So have a great day and go see the lights. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.